Most people in life are looking at how do I make a life worth living and retirement having. In order to do this, we have to be able to be free of abuse. An abuser's game says, I'm going to play with you. An abuser's game says, I'm going to do things to you that you don't like. An abuser's game says, I'm going to play with your fears. An abuser's game is the liars of America. An abuser's game never stops. An abuser's game is totally without cause. An abuser's game is usually committed by people who are total strangers. An abuser's game is always trying to put out bad vibes towards someone's life so that your own life can go on with success and without duress. But an abuser's game is what you can play to them. And the abuser's game is something that comes in from foreign lands. The abuser's game came in through the military and it came to us because our men were being abused by their minds. You see, we have seen these Stargate movies where people literally turn on each other with their guns and shoot at one another. And then we see that these profilers are trying to figure out what happened in these distant lands. But what we're really getting taught is what is possible with the mind. There's a marvelous television show, a couple of them actually, on, on the, the channel networks and the cable shows that talk about how the mind works and how the eyes see things. But at the same time, we're very familiar from our study of animal research that animals speak in lower registers. What we also know from our studies and from really good news programs is that our hearts, our minds, our souls can be programmable in the inaudible, in the subliminal. It's why some people will listen to these CDs and they'll quit smoking. Or it's why people listen to CDs to kind of lose weight. It's why people try to take a CD into their heart and their mind and their soul to feel better, to feel great. But what I'm talking about is the abuser's game. And the abuser's game says, I'm going to take away everything that you like for your life. And I'm going to force you to do it my way. That's an abuser's game. The liar will play the game up until the point that they're caught in their lie by someone that they really like or someone that they really care for or a profiler is trying to ruin the Lord's game. You see, the Lord's game is what everyone is playing in life. But there are profilers in the law enforcement networks. There are bastards and bitches in the military who think they have the right to play the liar's game on anybody. And the lie is that someone in a family, a biological family, thought they'd begin a game. And that game got completely out of control. And so out of control that they started to call law enforcement in order to get away from their lies, get away from their theft, get away from their cheating people out of their rights. And when that happens, the whole fucking thing gets out of control. And here's the reality. At any time, your entire life, your entire faith, your entire house, your entire possessions and all the things that you own can be taken from you despite our Bill of Rights, despite our amendments to the Constitution. You see, the Third Amendment to the Constitution is sort of about that. It's basically saying that military soldiers cannot be quartered, they can't be controlled like that. And I don't really understand all of that language because I'm not a lawyer like our President and Vice President, but here's what I know that I like that Kamala Harris did when she got into office. She started to carefully choose what was important for American people to see and hear. At the same time, she's removed herself away from independent, ill-willed, and immoral young professionals that don't know anything about American history. When Biden did some of those talks at Gettysburg, they were amazing to me. I got goosebumps. But what we've gotten away from today is how important content is. Content is what makes people interested, not always relational things. So what I'm talking about today is if you are playing in a liar's game where you feel like you have the right to call someone a liar, or it's like that movie um, <clears throat> with uh, some favorite actors where they were playing the game bullshit in a family, and it was sort of one of these um, how to convert a guy or catch a guy or something like this with a beautiful actress who's the daughter of... Um, Goldie Hawn, Kate Hudson, and I can't remember the name of the, the gentleman who everybody oohs and ahs over, the, who's a marvelous actor who did that. But the reality is, everybody lies. The only real question is, what is a lie versus what we have the right to not disclose in society, in public, versus what we share in intimate relationship, in privacy? So I'm asking you that question today. 
If you're a person of faith, what do you lawfully have the right to know about someone else's personhood, paperwork, or property, or body that is not in your immediate love life? You see, because under the law, we have first-party relationships and third-party relationships. And this is something that people really fuck up every day. Your first-party relationship is your spouse or significant other. But your third-party relationship are your children, your parents, your siblings, your relatives. So in your life of producing a life, there are certain people that can and cannot comment under the law on your what you're doing, and then there are people that can't. But most importantly in contract law is what is and isn't on the document or is and isn't in the verbal agreement. And if your verbal agreement is, I will not talk about this at all, I promise I won't, then you've already violated the agreement if you started talking about it. And those things are punishable under the law. And when it comes to our privacy rights, the privacy of our genitalia, the privacy of our medical rights, and I talk about these things because I'm talking about what's happening across the land, not only to our voting rights, where people are abusing what we have the right to do and when we have the right to do it and how we have the right to do it, but I'm talking about what these politicians are trying to do to men and women and children across America. We've got a president who's over-focused on COVID. I get he's afraid that America is going to be lost to it. Totally possible. God could kill us all with that COVID. And he released it because people were not listening to him. People were not remembering their mortality rate. People were living just in the day and not planning their lives. And so many people in America don't even have retirement, so maybe it's great that they have COVID so that they won't make it to retirement. I don't know God's plans. But what I can tell to you is that the morons of America have been trying to control other people's bodies for so many years, it's not even funny. But the truth is, some old bastard who's got a majorly fat-ass wife who's a religious shit from Georgia doesn't have the right to control some young lady's haughty body do you understand what I'm saying to you? That's immoral. It says so clearly in the Bible that it's immoral. You do not have the right to tell somebody how to live. You can encourage them to live a certain way. You can try to placate them into a different way. But the reality is when it comes to the privacy of the human body, the privacy of their relationships, the privacy of their property, those belong to the individual.